Today is November 20th, and uh, coming to you live from the heart of the Adafruit factory here in New York City. With me, as always, are Nui and Pedro Ruiz at Adafruit South. How you guys doing? Hey, yeah. Matt. Hey, everybody at home. We are doing just fine here in, yeah, Florida. It, I'm Noah Ruiz, designer here at, at Adafruit, Adafruit South. Join me as Pedro every week. Hey, guys. I'm Pedro Ruiz, creative technologist here at Adafruit. Let's go ahead and find out what we're doing here. Yeah. yeah. Well, so each week we get here, we hang out together, and we share the latest in 3D printing news, designs from the Adafruit Workbench, uh, projects from the community, and all sorts of things to help you make better 3D printed projects with electronics. So show us the show for today. Yeah, sure. we got a couple segments for you. We always start off the show with what are you prototyping, take a look at some future projects that are in the works. We have some 3D news, always scaring the net for very cool sh news to share with you guys. Weekly video where we uh, make an original project video featuring Adafruit goods. We have a layer by layer segment right, where we cover some CAD techniques and how we built said project. And a very special spotlight, community spotlight. So yes. it was fun. Uh, this week, uh, Emmett Lelish. Um, very excited to share about him. He's uh, very, very talented and uh, Inspiring guy, and uh, you have seen his work if you have looked at 3D printing. Yeah, his works, yeah. yeah. Legacy, one of the one of the top designers that we look up to. Nice. Very very cool. I totally agree. So, uh, what are you guys prototyping? Prototyping. This is, this is a fun segment. So we're gonna take a look at uh, our new machine to the family. This is the Orion Delta 3D printer. We just got it in the other day. So we uh, we just finished calibrating it. We we put in a couple hours into printing, and we got to say it's pretty awesome. Yeah. Anybody looking to make small little items like jewelry uh, at high resolution, uh, 100 micron resolutions coming out really awesome on in this thing. Has a heated bed, um, really fast small uh, footprint for a small desk. And then also we have right next to it a a giant beast. This is the Little Spot Tabs 4, but with a new upgraded dually. Flexi extruder, so we can print with um, not just multiple colors, but multiple materials. And, and, and this is specifically designed for working with Ninja Flex. So here we have a little uh, sample pr uh, print that we put together. It's the black stuff is um, Ninja Flex, and the and the little white pegs inside are um, ABS, and all fused together in one print. Oh, so excellent! We can make some pretty cool um, stuff that's flexible, but it still maintains that rigid rigidity that we, that you would need in a project. Nice. Yeah. So I've been thinking about the Orion a lot as well. I have uh, an Orion at home, which I'm really loving. And um, so we offer the Orion now in the Adafruit store, and uh, I have actually reviewed it in the 3D um, uh, 3D guide for Make this year. I will say the uh, and there, there are notes sort of to that in the in the article, but um, the we were running uh, a lot of their sort of preset uh, settings for uh, slicing that kind of thing, and uh, the folks in the community have really dialed in those settings, and this machine is just becoming a, a better and better option for everybody. Um, you can set it up so quickly right out of the box without too much fuss, which is great given that deltas used to be very, very difficult to put together. Um, and it is not only really fun to watch, but um, a very high precision machine to get it sorted. Oh, yeah. And you guys have some examples, some stuff you've been printing with it, right? Yeah, yeah. Let's yeah, go ahead and take a that. look at some comparison differences. Here we have um, print that was printed at 200 microns, which is sort of the baseline that we're able to get at any of the printers. And with the Delta here, Ryan, we got much finer at 100 microns. So this would be uh, way easier to sand down or apply um, some, you know, any other type of finishing techniques. You see, totally see the ridges on the 200 micron one right there. This guy. And the Orion at 100. Yeah, I'm amazed that this printed with no support, like just straight up. Oh yeah, we'll talk about this more in the layer by layer. But yeah, support material on this. We have a winner. Yeah. Straight up. Check out our uh, buyer's guide in, in the um, or 3D printers in the um, learn system. You'll see we've added you know, the Orions in there with, uh, with details, some pros and cons, and some, some things to get excited about for Delta printers. And, uh, and also, um, I added the page, uh, activated the page for Octoprint, uh, yeah. the settings there. 
uh, which I've actually just changed in the last month. So if you had been playing with it before, um, you can use the latest version of Octoprint that has the updated high serial stuff, and you can uh, run your Orion at uh, you know at the, the same VOD rate as you um, using your Raspberry Pi that uh, you might with a desktop. So, uh, so check those guides out so you can uh, use use your printer the way you like. Yeah, very formal. Are you ready to jump into some news? Absolutely. Yeah, okay. So one of the things I was really excited about this week is this project, the Open Railway project from Daniel Noray. So you might have seen his Open RC project. It's something we shared about the past here. Um, in particular, he's done all these amazing videos with his community of building these 3D printed uh, RC cars and, and doing terrible, awesome things in which they're destroyed and then you know, just reprint it, keep it going. Uh, but so this is something he has done for years with his father. They're both railway uh, fans, and they have sort of synthesized, put together all their sort of techniques for using 3D printing for railroad stuff, and they're sharing it to try to make it easier for people to kind of make modular stuff to suit different, you know, standard scales. Uh, that's a big deal for those who are interested in uh, in trying to do railroad, you know, model railroad stuff. Uh, they don't have to do some of that heavy lifting. And my goodness, these uh, models turn out so well. He's really talented. For detail. Wow. Yeah. Um, and speaking of detail, uh, this this is sort of a, a favorite story for a lot of people this past week. And it's, you know, a little bit of uh, kind of self-marketing for this guy. Mm -hmm. um, so we have uh, this artist, uh, Jaunty uh, Hurwitz, uh, who made what he was trying to sort of get into Guinness Book of World Records as the smallest sculptures in the world that he had designed. And you can, you can go to his, his site and see uh, documentation of how he, he made these figures. Okay, let's go down and look at some of these guys. Okay, this is a sculpture on a hair. <laughs> that is a... <laughs> these things were really, really small. Now, these are renderings. Oh, but, you know, it's to give you a sense of scale. So... Uh, he manages to get these things produced with a lot of help and a lot, you know, a lot of work with some labs, and uh, but he just can't see it. So you have to check out this video, which is sort of one one long take of him uh, sort of talking through this experience, in which he basically ended up getting kind of a, a rental electron microscope and operator to come in so he could actually see the results of this process, and uh, yeah, they kind of lost them. <laughs> Too small. Too small. Um, Nailed them. <laughs> I I really like this tutorial from Joe Larson, who goes by Simon on uh, a lot of online uh, repos and such. Um, <laughs> he did a a really excellent lithopane workflow uh, for Blender. Uh, that's it's pretty optimized. A lot of people who've been curious about this stuff might and uh, had you know kind of frustrating experiences in the past. Uh, might want to try this again and use his sort of new approach. It's um, it's a great way to, to to see how to use Blender as a kind of quick Swiss Army knife uh, to clean up simple meshes as well and scans. Uh, so, you know, two reasons I could it. So you guys wanted to share about this, and I, I'm I was very excited to hear about this. Yes, very very cool. Um, so Sebri from uh, Fragdolls uh, built uh, our Pie Girl project. And she really went the extra mile on this one. So she did a, an awesome job on the video and explaining how to how how her build process was. And uh, she she actually sanded it down and made it really really nice looking. And she also um, drilled some holes into the PCB so that it wouldn't get misaligned for like extended play. So it just works really nice. It looks awesome. And she went the extra mile and even gave one away to one of our lucky viewers. So this is really cool. We love seeing when people create our projects even more when they make an awesome video about it and tell people to check it out. This is really, really cool. So check it out. It's on, uh, on the blog and on their YouTube channel, Frag Dolls. And uh, another thing that you guys shared today um, that is, is a, an interesting way to use, uh, use your 3D printer, like a single extruder 3D printer, and some planning. We're going to talk about the multicolor approach here. 
Yeah, it looks like it's a little mechanism that sort of solders the um, filaments together, does the cutting, and just runs with any G-code and is able to do um, multiple extrusions with just one um, extruder. Wow. And the results are pretty amazing um, compared to you know do, doing a dual extrusion. There's no leaking or anything like that. As you can see in the video, it's doing all the uh, chopping and um, mixing for you there. So this is a really cool addition to you know sort of the ecosystem of um, you know sex accessories for 3D printing. Yeah, this is great. Yeah, and I mean, I, I definitely second the the notion that you know a lot of those dual extruders, uh, they're kind of you know mechanical uh, you know lash issues that make it really tricky. Yeah, I mean, there's uh, little tricks like making shrouds and things like that, but this totally saves on you know any extra material. Mm. Um, and then another thing that we haven't tried yet, but we've been talking about and very curious about, this uh, new smooth-on product, uh, Ecstasy 3D. Um, I don't know if you guys have seen any uh, printed projects with this yet, uh, but I know a lot of people have been grabbing this because they're curious about, uh, you know, that it, it supposedly works well on PLA as well as ABS. Yeah, we'll definitely order some up and try Yeah, it. we will definitely test this out. Um, we're sure other people are testing as we speak. It's pretty new. Nice. And uh, just one quick sort of fun, fun thing we shared. Um, at, a, at an opening of a 3D printer store, they had this crazy installation piece. Uh, as far as the 3D printing is concerned, it's more that they made uh, little diffusers, um, translucent diffusers for all these assignable lights. But it's just a really ambitious project. Turned out really well. Uh, it gets you sort of excited about you know the 3D printing part of art kind of drifting a little bit more into the background and uh, people using these kind of tools to make just awesome stuff they dream up. And uh, that is the news for today. Yay. Where can people find all these lovely stories? Nice. So uh, so what is the project of the week? <laughs> Adafruit.com slash blog. <laughs> you want to check out those stories. Sorry, I forgot to mention that. Yeah, um, so this week's project is another very cool wearable project. Um, this is another Lady Ada requested project in collaboration with Phil B, who did the software. And this is really kind of like that extension of our fall collection, right? We've been doing a lot of retro video game inspired jewelry. And this is no different. This is a very cool one. Like I said, it's wearable. It's you, you already know what it is. It's a Mario question block. And I love how iconic the Mario question block is. You can show anybody this thing, and they're going to know where it's from or what it sounds like. And this is really cool because you just hit it, and it makes that sound, and it lights up. So it's really, really cool. Um, it's uh, it's actually pretty cheap and quick to make as well. So it's it's a really cool, super easy to build wearable project that you can uh, that you can't get from ThinkGeek. <laughs> Not yet, anyway. Not yet, anyway. Maybe they'll rip us off. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about the code that makes um, that makes it go. Yeah. So yeah. this isn't just a wave or a MP3. It's playing back. This is actual really pretty hardcore code that's going on in the background to make generate the um, two tone waves and it's sweeping uh, between the two. You betcha. And it works with the Gemma, but we're using the Trinket here, which is our like seven dollar very affordable uh, bite sized Arduino microcontroller. And like Pedro was saying, that the the microcontroller generates a little tune when uh, the vibration switch is triggered and it lights up the LED. And it's not like a speaker or anything. It's actually just a piezo, which is really good for making those 8-bit sounds. I, I turned it off. off. Yeah. Oh, OK, I turned it off. It gets annoying after a while. It gets annoying. <laughs> so we, we recommend that you check out uh, the uh, the guide on the Adafruit Learning System. You know, it, Phil B says it's not good beginner code, but he's so modest. It's so it's crazy. You're probably going to learn some things. Um, it's using AT Tiny peripheral registers directly, so it's not going to run on any other Arduino boards. Um, but it's commented like crazy, so you might discover some new stuff if you're poking around in there. And real quick, um, the the pitch function is actually what's making and configuring the frequency. And there's an interrupt that alternates between high and low parts, making a square wave. So you get that sort of sort of Swooping. sweep, right? So it's like B note sweeps over to E6. It's pretty it's pretty awesome. Um, so that's how that works. And uh, we'll go ahead and, and take a look at the video and talk about uh, the little design and circuit. Assembly, assemblyness. So, like we we're saying, it's a pretty fun project to make, and it it actually makes a really good gift. I think it's like a box, but a box within a box. Uh, there's not too many parts to make. Um, it's it's like a low build cost was pretty low. We are using uh, the Trigate microcontroller, lipo backpack to make it a power circuit, little piezo battery switch, and the easy to trigger vibration switch. Yay.
explain. And that forced perspective looks so great on the camera. Yeah, that was actually Phil B's idea. Yes, thank you for mentioning that. Wow, because many, you know, we could have just made a box and threw some questions on it, but this, we'll talk about in Lair by Lair how, uh, how you can make this sort of shape, how you fake that perspective. Yeah. So again, um, we're using the 30 gauge silicone coated wires for all the connections, and um, we just start up by breaking the trace to set up the, uh, the LiPo backpack. It's designed for a switch mine. Always want to use a uh, uh, heat shrink tubing. We have our fancy colored heat shrink for that. So fancy. It's so efficient as well. <laughs> yeah, so um, we're going to solder up the LiPo battery so we can enable it to charge the circuit so we don't have to take the battery out or anything like that. Yeah. The um, vibration switch on this vibration switch, huh? Yeah, so we're using two um, flat uh, Haku pliers to sort of curve this into shape so it can fit right on the back pads of the trinket. And then you can use some, some fun tack to keep it in place while you solder. solder. It's always nice. Little tip there. Um, definitely check out the guide on the Native Free Learning System to uh, get all the instructions and lovely assembly photos um, to build your own. Yeah, and definitely the LED sequins are come to the rescue here in providing um, being able to fit in such a tiny little enclosure. A regular size LED would definitely not fit in here. So we've got these in the shop as well, these teeny tiny little uh, uh, LED sequins. Yeah. yeah, so the two parts, it's just a three-part design, actually. It takes about an hour to print, and you can print it with no support material using PLA, of course. And we used a little bit of uh, transparent yellow-colored PLA to give it that sort of diffused look when, uh, when the light lights up. Piezo, of course, is in the back there, and we, uh, we made a little hole so that you can uh, thread the wires through, and then it mounts with, uh, two, mounting with two mounting screws. So it's on, nice and in, in, in place, so it's not going to go anywhere if it falls or whatnot. Um, all the circuits just sort of fit in, in, in there, and the trinket is mounted to one of the, to a little standoff in, in the corner up there. And then the switch is just sort of inserted in carefully, and it's held in place by these little clips. You've probably seen those clips in, like, every one of our projects. <laughs> super um, handy. Yeah, it's super handy. And you just snap on the cover, prints with no support, and it's pretty, it's pretty retro-tastic. And there's and there's Brandy modeling it, lovely. <laughs> it, it does get annoying, but man, is it super cool! Like, oh wow. <laughs> Were you tempted to have it, you know, do like a level up, like a, a new new life? <laughs> yeah, that we're looking for our, our, our uh, we're right, looking right. for you guys to do that. If you want to make it like extra cool, add some extra notes to it or whatnot, definitely by all means and, Check out uh, the code, and yeah. share it with us. We'll definitely feature it. So I guess now we're going we're gonna to go ahead and take a look at um, look at some uh, CAD stuff. Let's see how I built this thing. Yeah, give me a sec, Pedro, to load up said video. Okay, cool. So here's a tour of the design file that we give away on our 123D gallery. You can also download the STL files so on Thingiverse and other repository sites. Careful with the wire. So as always, we include all of the edible components that actually build all this, all the cutouts. So the hoop split ring, we have the um, slide switch, the holes for the trinket, the mounting, little standoffs there, and down here at the bottom is actually where we mount the piezo, you can see that there, and as we were talking before earlier, we have the little uh, holes that uh, you can string everything through. Uh, makes it a much more compact design instead of putting the piezo inside of the box as well. Yeah, that really helped out keeping it thin. Some of the tricks that uh, we did for building this uh, 2D, 3D design was with the sketch polygon tool. So after I uh, mocked up a, a working circuit of it, I measured out what the tallest um, sort of standoffs would be for that. It was like 22 millimeters for that, and we're doing six sides for that. And once we extrude, we can actually, the handles that actually handle sort of the, um, what's it called, the, I guess the angular uh, way that this um, that we yeah, making the tapers. Shape. Right? Yeah, the tapering. That's kind of hard to see. Um, so you, <laughs> you can rotate around your model to sort of get to the handle that allows you to do that. It's sort of hidden. It's, yeah, it's a little hidden. So we'll go negative yeah. 70 degrees on that so we can make a little point for that. We'll rotate that around so we can get the perspective that we're looking for. And then we're going to select the, um, not the vertices, but the lines. And here's one trick. Um, when I was trying to extrude this out, the... Um, just some of the ways, uh, one of the little quirks of the way 123D works is instead of doing this and using um, a sketch to cut out the bottom, you'll actually want to do a projection on the bottom and then extrude that downwards. 
So you can sort of add the lips that are going to act as the snap cover for that. So after we do that, we can go over and select the um, sort of the, the lines that'll uh, create that 2D effect. So I'll go up here and sort of I just sort of eyeballed this to see what the uh, the 3D look would be to build the the box out of this. Another tip is for importing the SVGs, getting the question mark to snap to um, the, uh, the face on there, yeah, the face surface, is just snapping it, and we're just using the lower face for that to snap to. The, um, the lip there included just uh, in case your tolerances are different on your printer, you can easily oh, cool. adjust that. You can uh, make tolerance a little bit tighter so it doesn't just uh, pop off. Creating the um, diffusion for this, we're just using the projection uh, project tool, sketch. Project sketch off of that, and you can uh, sort of build the um, the objects out of um, the lip area out of that. Yeah, so you just project project that, and you can select the middle part to extrude and build your diffusion. It's usually about 0.5 is all you really need to get a really evenly distributed light from uh, the enclosure. And that is pretty much it. Yeah, you can get all the files on a 123 d gallery. And uh, throw something Thingiverse. Get the Thingiverse. Check wants. out. Great. Um, Learn that idea fruit for the complete step by step on building the whole circuit. Yeah. Nice. What do you think? So we're gonna jump right into our uh, community spotlight this week, sharing about. Uh, I'm going to uh, share uh, Emmett the Day Leash. Now I had thought it was. Uh, Laylish. I did too. Laylish. How do you pronounce it? <laughs> I've never heard him say his last name. Oh, and he's wow. going to give me heck after this. Oh, uh, no. oh. He goes by Emmett online and has, um, I, I think uh, it is safe to say this claim I'm going to share right here. Uh, it has been argued that given how frequently his designs have been printed at maker fairs, oh, yeah. trade shows, tech demos, he most his work has sold more desktop oh. 3D printers than <laughs> he sold audiences on the value of them than any other designer in the world. That's right, no okay. doubt. No it's doubt. a little bit bold, but come on. He, look at this. <laughs> Every, you know, what's not to love about the Screwless Heart Gears project? Oh my goodness, it's so timeless. So yeah. many great projects. How, did, how big is that one? How tall did you print that one? It's too big. It's like the max that you can make it on a rep one. Like each part is just maxed out. Or at least uh -oh. this part. So it's it's bigger uh, than February, will you try to max out your TAS 4? Oh, oh my god. god, we totally should. I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> gonna need a lot of red. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna run through a couple of this. He is, uh, he's shared projects all over the spectrum of 3D design from uh, artwork to useful mechanical things. Um, this is one of the, the, the Screwless Heart Gears project in specific, I think, um, was one of the, the early triggers that kind of helped uh, desktop 3D printing uh, oh. prove itself. That's and totally this was another thing, because you can print these stretchy bracelets, which are just little one wall mm -hmm. items. And it shows how you can use the same hard plastic to, that you would print like a very solid piece and make something flexible. Uh, they're very fast to print and therefore almost everybody has printed hundreds and hundreds of these. Uh, anybody who has discovered this model and had a need to print things for lots of people. This is my favorite one of his models, the automatic transmission model. Um, it's, it is a sort of working tech demo of what an automatic transmission is like. Well, it, it actually has the, the gearing ratios, etc., of an automatic transmission. But instead of having the automatic timing mechanism that you would expect from, like, in, in a vehicle, um, he, he has these little handheld controls along the side you, you flip, because it's, it's sort of a teachable model. This is the, uh, the tool that shows you how this works. And, uh, and, and it's shows one of the advantages of being able to design mechanical things uh, cheaply in a tool like this. Uh, he got to learn a lot of things that he was curious about, about how an automatic transmission worked, and he can now demonstrate it uh, such that people 
can actually understand how the relationship of the planetary gears and the sort of gearing ratios work. And it's a customizer project um, made in OpenSCAD. So you can actually set up your own gear ratios. Uh, though I haven't seen anybody actually do that. It's over the top, man. Uh, this is another very popular project. It's a print-in-place project that you can print on. Uh, it was designed for Rep Replicator 1, but um, people print it on almost all machines. So it prints like this, flat down on the, uh, on the bed. Uh, but you can immediately twist it. And uh, you know, and close it up, and you have this thing that can constantly turn and twist because there's just enough tolerance uh, between uh, the, the the parts that you need to be moving uh, that it it can actually it prints them without fusing them. They're just sort of slightly tacked in there, mm -hmm. uh, and just mechanically moving with your hand, you can kind of free it up so that you can you can move it around. And I, I guess I should probably jump to into the video for this one because it's. It's, uh, this is the kind of experience that really makes a couple people gasp who haven't really figured out what 3D printing might, might do. So here you have it closed up. You can spin it around, and it's locked, locked in. So it was uh, you know, a per like a little Valentine's project he made that has, like the screwless heart gears, become a Valentine for so many people in the world to give people their love. <laughs> Uh, and this is a, another sort of awesome. classic one that he made. Uh, once again, using OpenSCAD, which is um, you know a, a code best, a code based parametric design tool. Uh, he made it so uh, this one model can transform um, between a kind of a, a closed up, you know, masked lamp to one like this, that if you look at it in a, in a dark room, it really throws interesting patterns, depending on what materials you print with. So he spends a lot of time with this tool and has helped disprove more claims that, oh, yeah, you can't really make art with that than almost anybody. Uh, but he also cheats using math and science. Uh, he is quite a MATLAB uh, expert, and he does a lot of kind of pre-compute geometry uh, in MATLAB that he'll then bring back in and, and drop into OpenSCAD. Uh, some people say that's cheating, but, uh, you know, whatever. You, sh you can cheat, too. So that's how he does things, like the, the beautiful sort of rounded heart. Um, it, it actually would be kind of hard to make that so smooth in OpenSCAD without this help. But he drops in all this geometry that he's worked out in MATLAB, and you're good to go. Wow. And the, here is one of his designs that is a useful machine mod that didn't get a lot of attention, but is kind of, uh, kind of incredible. So a year after most people had sort of given up on the MakerBot thingamatic automatic build platform, Emmett kept working and hacking on his, and he solved it. His totally works. He could go to Maker Bears, which he, he would do, and, uh, and run part after part after part with no problem. Um, he changed a couple aspects to design, including making these rollers uh, that are kind of more like a bead, where they're, they're kind of rounded in the middle, and sort of countered some of the assumptions that people had going in for, for how it might function. So take a look at the uh, interview that we have up, and he's promised he's going to send me, um, we've been going back and forth and doing a post-mortem of the automatic transmission project. So that would be a treat for the future. But you can read about some of his background, some of the things he's excited about and the things he's learned, and see some of his, his latest projects. I didn't even include some of his most classic pieces in this rundown, and I totally ran out of space. So you have to go check it out. Anyhow, he really is one of my very favorite designers and uh, has inspired so many people. Um, and he goes back and forth between declaring himself more engineer or more artist, and um, I think that also is a great model. Uh, for people to know that you know they can learn things about math to make prettier objects. Oh yeah. So right. uh, so that's it for the community spotlight. So oh, thank, thank you all for coming and watching us here. And where can we? Uh, where can people see stuff online? They want to see more of our projects. Sure. If you want to see more projects, we encourage you to check out the learning system at learn.edufor.com. You can also see more awesome stories and things we share on Google Plus. Every Thursday, every Thursday on the blog, and you can follow myself. Pedro, Matt, we're on the Twitter versus Instagrams and me versus. 
Universes. <laughs> that works, you guys, for watching. Uh, we'll Thank see you guys for, for watching, and we'll see you next week. Until then, we're going to keep on praying. Oh, yeah. See you guys. All right.